after you get married, people stop sleeping with their spouses. spouses. Yeah. It was like, it is a normal thing. Hey guys, it's the Delphinator here. If you're new here, you and if you're an oldie, welcome back. Um, so last week we started off with a bunch of questions that came through from our how God chose my spouse video. And we're just going to wrap things up. There are a bunch of questions. So we're going to try to run through them. Can you just take a quick prayer for us? So? Heavenly Lord, thank you for this moment. Uh, I ask for wisdom, understanding, and the knowledge of your word. And we pray that your spirit will rest upon it to bless everyone who's going to hear in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. There's a quote here that says, as long as there is fruit, two people will always find a renewed reason to love each other. This highlights purpose to me. I think this is something that Sam said, mm. right? The question for Delphine, whilst you were waiting, did you entertain other godly guys along the journey? <laughs> because there can be a thin line between waiting for someone and also giving room for the person's choice. So how did you manage that? I think we tackled a bit of this. Well, yeah, <laughs> I think we did. In the last video, somebody else asked the same question, but she's asking it in a different way. Yeah. So I think I'll still go back to, I don't believe in dating. I know I said this in the last video. I'm going to say it again, over and over again, until you guys get to So I'm trying to say that you do not believe in dating. Therefore, you are not going to enter entertain any approach from a guy. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that you believe that God has to show you clearly in a dream who the guy is, and then you go on waiting for the guy? What if the guy never wakes up to the reality okay, of what so God is? Here's what I'll say. I don't know about your personal walk with God. Mm. I can only speak from my own personal okay. walk with God. I had gotten to the point where I said to God, okay. I do not want to do trial and error. I'd done it in the past and it didn't work. So this is why he actually showed me someone. So I understand this person's question in that, what if God shows you a person yeah. and the person does not reciprocate? What do you do? You go back to God. Okay. Right? Because I, I know of people who they believe God spoke to them about someone, the person went ahead to marry somebody else. In some cases, the guy who said, I know that God wants you for me, but I don't want. Yeah. Sam has also as an example of that, you know, there's, yeah. there can be a lady that will say, even though God said, this is the guy, I don't want it. Yeah. But for me personally, I got it to the point where I was willing to do anything for the will of God. If the person did not agree, then I'll go back to God and be like, God, so oh, what, what the person yeah. said. What next? You know? Yeah. So what about the duration? Is there, is the, you think, you know, I, I believe in getting things done quickly, you know, from a woman's perspective, from a lady's perspective, how long should you then wait for God? Okay. If it is this person, you know, but anyway, I think it does still go back to the fact that you have to go, go back, back to, to God. God. That's it. So how long will the person have to wait? Then? I don't know. Okay. Some people have waited five years. Some people have waited two years. Some people have waited 10 years. I honestly do think that it is, this is never a very clear line. Mm -hmm. Your relationship with God in this aspect of life is going to be very important, um, to, to define how long this thing is. Um, she waited a year, year and a half. A year and a half. I, I do think that a year and a half is a, a long very time. long time. <laughs> and I, I would not advise anyone to wait for anyone because just simply because God said, so you turn down all the other men and you are waiting for this guy that God showed you. I, I don't know how that plays out, but honestly, I do think that your relationship with God is going to tell when it comes to your choice of marriage. Mm -hmm. um, marriage is so important that I believe that God is not going to leave it for chance the capacity you have to believe God on this is equal to the capacity you would have to believe God for your entire life. I absolutely agree with that. So the real, there's no formula. I don't, I can't say five years, two years, seven years. The only answer I can give you is the almighty formula. Go back to the Holy Spirit. He's the only one that can tell you whether the person has moved on, whether you're waiting for too long, whether, you know, you need to move on. Yeah. I, I, really. Yeah. I think there's a blessing in waiting for God's choice, mm -hmm. what you believe, even if you do it, you, you, you should not be foolish for too long. Um, but. Well, you can be foolish for a little while, but not for too long. Yeah. At some point in trying to do God's will, you're yeah, going to be, be foolish. You're going to look foolish. <laughs> you're going to act foolish. You're going to do something out of mind. 
However, waiting on God is a rewarding thing. Mm -hmm. It's a rewarding process. So, Dale, how do you search? Because you keep talking about searching. And what do you use when searching? Because interpretation is what causes mm. the confusion. Um, the first thing is to take the dream to the Holy Spirit. The problem with many of us is that when we have dreams, we have an idea of what we already want. Mm. So we interpret our own meaning into the dream. It's what they call, I think, eisegesis in terms of mm. interpreting the scriptures. Is it eisegesis? when you okay. interpret your okay. own meaning. So it's like, it's the same way you do Bible study. If the word of the Lord can come through a dream, right? Mm. And the word of the Lord can come through scripture. How do you study your scripture? You first pray and ask the Holy Spirit, you know, for direction. Sometimes some of what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you is not even embedded in the dream. He can use word of knowledge to help you explain the text of the dream. Mm. Case in point, the dream I had where I saw um, a beaten, a bruised Mitsubishi car. How did I know that Sam was a car? Because when I woke up, the Holy Spirit literally said, Sam is the car. There was nothing in the dream that mentioned Sam's name. He's, he wasn't seen in the dream in any of the scenes, nothing. But when I woke up, I just had a knowing. That's, that can only be from the Holy Spirit. So you cannot interpret any dream outside of what the Holy Spirit speaks to you. When I speak about searching, I'm also talking about actually looking up the words, the meaning of certain names and words in the dream, going to scripture. If you see certain symbols, if you see a cross, a snake, a this, go to scripture and search what, what does, what's the symbolical representation of, of a cross in scripture. Mm. And based on the context of the dream, you can now tell whether it's negative or positive because many symbols can be po both positive and negative. Case in point, the serpent. I know it sounds strange that a serpent can be positive, but yes, it can be. It could either be the devil being giving you tales, as in stories, the long tail of a snake, the T-A-I-L versus T-A-L-E. It's just a play on words. It could be about deception, how um, Satan came as a serpent to Eve. But on the positive side, it could be Jesus, the brazen serpent on the cross that the Israelites looked upon and they were healed. So the context of the dream helps you to tell. It could also be idiomatic expressions embedded in the dream. Um, like a dream I had about something biting somebody in the butt. That is an idiomatic expression. It means that something that the person did came back to haunt them, right? I don't know if you see. So when I say search, this is what I mean. It might take you a while. You have to meditate, stay on it, think about it, ponder on it, go to scripture. Don't just give the dream a meaning because this is what you want. And I see that when it comes to dreams about marriage and relationships, a lot of women, especially, do that because they already have emotions attached to a person. And when they dream about the person, they just believe, hey, God is saying this is my husband. Meanwhile, he might not be so. It might just be that God is using the personality of that person to explain something to you. Um, Oti gave an example in the video I did with him about dream interpretation. He said a lady um, had a dream where she got married to some guy named Toju. Mm. And she believed that Toju was the person that God wanted her to marry. Meanwhile, Toju literally means covenant. So God was saying, I want to come into covenant. <laughs> she saw the dream and just ran with, hey, told you it's my husband. I mean, well, who knows? Maybe the told you guy was already married. You, do you see how you test and you search? First of all, God will not ask you to marry somebody that is already married. Do you see where I'm going with this? How long did it take for his eyes to finally open after he was revealed to you? This is your question, Sam. Uh, after you were revealed yes, to me. Yes, when you had the dream and you knew. How long did it take for my eyes to open? My, no. How long did it take for us to get together? I think that's what the person saying. After your eyes had opened. I went straight for it. Like, bro, literally, the next day, <laughs> he had yeah. the dream, what, then, Christmas night yeah. into Boxing Day morning. Mm. Boxing Day, he told me that he wanted literally the same day. It, but then if you think yeah. about the fact that you had been praying. Yeah. So it wasn't just like a one day. Yeah. So I, I was trying to narrate this to someone yesterday. And so I think I'm going to say a bit of that, you know. Especially when it comes to kingdom marriage, um, I think it's important that we've said so many times not to overemphasize the worldly expectations that come with Christian marriage. I think it was King James that did a little video on Instagram. Yes, that was so good. About a few uh, couples that people look up to and say these are Christian uh, kingdom um, marriages. They could be Christian couples, but kingdom Take it easy with that. You know, don't, don't, don't be quick to say it's a kingdom thing. You know, when you talk about a kingdom, you're talking about a king. You're talking about an idea that is not yours. You're thinking about submitting 
And so when you put that into context, you realize that you can actually say no, you know, mm. um, that you're living in a kingdom doesn't mean that you're loyal to a mm. king. You know, there are people who are living in Nigeria that are not loyalists to um, Tinubu. Mm. Um, definitely, it's not, a, it's not a kingdom we are running, but, you know, in a way it is. Um, you, you, you have to think about the fact that your marriage is just a tool, not just a tool, but primarily uh, an entrance of heaven into the earth. I said that to say that it means that when God reveals these things to you, marriage especially, you, you might not be where you need to be and they may not be where they need to be. In fact, you may not, may not be where you need to be mentally to see what God is showing you. I think someone else gave this example um, and, and he spoke about how Joseph, no, Joseph, Joseph, no, I, Jacob, Jacob married four wives, right? No, so uh, the other, the concubines, yes. Yes. How it is Leah that gave Jacob, all the important people. Like Judah. Judah, yeah. All the important people came from... Levi, I think. Yes. None of them came from his two wives. They all came from... No, 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 no. None of them came from from the loved wife. From Rachel. the loved wife, the other, yes. They came from Leah. Yes. But the kingdom, um, it, was, it was in the plan that those other ones were there. But now, because of the Holy Spirit... God can give you his plan and you will love his plan. That is the whole idea of the coming of the Holy Spirit, that we are regenerated, not just to make a decision to follow Jesus, but that we are regenerated to make every other decision of our lives after Jesus. That is, then by the time God can reveal your wife to you, you must have made a lot of decisions leading up to this point that is kingdom. You don't just wake up to make this decision. Having said that, I have been praying, not really about for, not for a wife per se, but I've been praying about Nigeria, about my purpose, about what God wants me to do in Nigeria. Then as a matter of fact, heaven intended that I would get married this year. That year. That year. <laughs> we dance around the idea of love if you're not ready this year, does it mean that there was no girl this year you would have fallen in love with? Do you get what I mean? Mm. If you are not living in Nigeria, does it mean that, do you get what I mean? There are many scenarios. How do you define falling in love? Is it casting stone? When God revealed it to me, then I started to, to journey towards where God was. Someone said to um I think it was Pastor Mo, someone sent to him that he, as he was praying, she was like, all these people don't love me. And God said, they don't know me yet. It's not that they don't love me, but they don't know me. If they know me, they will love me. If you know what God's will is, you will love it and you will pursue it immediately. Yeah. Dell, how did you manage to be patient for that long to know the food is mine, but have to wait till the food notices me? It's yeah. another level of patience. If I were in your shoes, maybe I would have even stopped talking to God about him and concentrate on other things like focus on ministry and work. When he finally said, let's court, I felt like, ah, if I were Dale, I would have given him a little knock on his forehead <laughs> for stretching my patience. Anyway, all things work together for good. To them that love God and are called according to his purpose. I love how supportive your friends are. God bless them. I pray to have friends like that too. I say amen to that prayer. How did I manage to, to be patient? God was working patience within me. Yeah. So it's not that I was patient. Yeah. It's that God was trying to bring out the fruit of patience within yeah. me. Yeah. So the more I stayed, the more I waited on God. Yeah. The more, like you said, focus on other things. I actually did that. I was focused on ministry, on what, on the work that God had given yeah. me to do at the time. So it's not like I was sitting down at home, absolutely jobless, just thinking, oh my God, this guy, when you, when will you remember me? When, no, I have things that I was doing. I was busy. Did you get, I was working, plowing the field, you know? So you're right about that. Yes, focus on other things, but it still doesn't mean that you won't have days when you feel like, oh my God, what is happening? But I would say that I didn't have patience. God worked patience. So good. Me, and he still is doing that. 
Bible says, count it joy when you go through diverse, diverse trials, trials and temptations. temptations. <laughs> and then not, after, not long after that, he said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him, let ask. him ask. And it looks like it's such a disparity between two thoughts, two thoughts, but it's the same in that if you, if, if your trial produces joy, that means that you have gained the wisdom. Mm. Mm. And if you don't have joy in your trial, you might have just wasted your time. Yeah. So when patience has been worked out, you find out that God will continue to fill you up with joy that will keep you not expectant on anything per se, but you will be waiting. Mm. Yeah. And, and he's faithful and merciful enough to ensure that no trial comes to you more than you can bear. Mm. You know, it, I'm telling you, I know that Del says, I, I, you know, I like how she said, God gave me patience, which is so true. And we don't want to sound too proud about this whole process because God, when he sees that you are faithful, when he sees that you are doing your best to pursue him and count it all joy, he steps in. You know, he knows that if this guy, this worldly guy comes, you're gone. <laughs> you know, don't think you're going to stand. He knows and he is faithful to keep that guy away from you, mm. to preserve you. In the beginning, it may look a bit dicey. Like, is this guy, you know, God preserves his and he will preserve you. Then you show him that you're committed to his will. You, are, you really want this. Don't think the enemy is going to come from nowhere and snatch you away from his hands. God will preserve you and will ensure that there is no temptation that will come your way at that time that is higher than what he's using to build the things he intends to build in you. Someone says, wow, it all sounds so surreal. Does this happen to everyone or is it just you two? I mean, I'm in awe of this side of God, the romantic and matchmaking side. <laughs> I hope you will show me mercy and let me have this experience too. How would you answer that question? Let me, let me start by saying God will work with you to the degree that you allow him. So when you say, is it just you two? I don't think so. I mean, from Sam's dream, the dream he had where literally people were being thrown off a train mm. in twos. You will not be thrown off if you don't allow yourself to be thrown off. He could have struggled and said, no, 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 no. I'm not, no, no. But like our friend Nani. <laughs> He could have struggled and remained on the train, but he allowed himself to be pushed off, you know. So it's to the degree that you allow, you give God an entrance. I decided that I wanted to do God's will. So God helped me to do his will. So it's up to you. If you want God to work with you in this way, decide. Choose this day <laughs> <laughs> who you will serve. Yeah. Choose that you want to actually do the will of the Lord and the Lord will empower you. He will back you up to do his will. So if you're open to it, it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, just because we've shared our story and it's so detailed and people want that for themselves, don't expect that God will do it for you in the same way. So don't be expecting to, for, to have a trance and somebody walk into yeah. your room. It might not happen in that way. Yeah. You know, so just allow God do his thing. Don't, don't try to make it match what you have seen in other couples and other people's stories. Yeah. Allow God to tell your own story. Right. I have always had this notion towards getting married to someone I'm older than. Um, my last genuine relationship, I discovered I was older, but he liked to cover it up because he doesn't want to lose me or didn't want to lose me, according to him. Something happened along the line and the truth finally came out. The relationship started shaking and finally ended. The notion is still there and I don't know why, why, because it makes me so eager to know the age of my, of any brother that comes my way. I believe your case is different because God already spoke to you. So for someone like me that is yet to hear from God in that area, what should I do concerning this matter? Most times I tell myself it's just a number. At times I feel differently over it again. Still back to that question about age. Mm. I, 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 do, I do think that there, especially in our time, people should be ready to marry all sorts of ages because of the family, the, when there was no internet, you only hung around with the people of your age. Yeah, your, your mates. Your mates. You only had interactions with them. If you couldn't even get into uh, jokes with an older group, you know, unless you've got an, a, a bunch of older sisters and stuff like that, and then you, you'll get some eavesdroppings and, and whatnot. But, you, but as time has gone on, people have now grown into 
uh, very common communities with people who are many times way older than they are. That's one. Two is that there is no more time. Mm. There is no more time for a lot of things. Things have become very, very spiritual. Life has become very, very spiritual. Um, I know I, I go straight into the Bible, straight into spiritual things very quickly. Um, but I, I, I don't know how to see life any other way. I think life has become really, really spiritual and being spiritual is not being spooky. Being spiritual is, is having the wisdom to act and do what you are to do at the time you're supposed to do it to achieve the purpose that you are destined to live out. Mm. That is what it means to be spiritual. And if it means that your husband or your wife is older, younger, whatever, being spiritual means that you have what it takes to devote and humble yourself before God until he brings your mind to a place where you find peace in his wisdom. Mm. And that was what's going to happen in a lot of uh, marriages. Um, I had a friend, a very close friend, in fact, best of friends, um, who his wife was older than he was. And he kept on advising me to say, it doesn't actually matter. At that time, I could say my mind was a bit troubled and I had to go to God with it. I had to go to God with it. And he, he, he really helped my heart. This is encouraging, but how do you stay hopeful and in faith amidst the storms in your life? How do you stay hopeful, hopeful and in faith? And in faith amidst the storms in your life. Um, you, you don't actually, God holds you, you know, mm -hmm. um, a few things happened within that time before we got married that God wanted me to know that he wanted me to know that I'm, he's, I'm not the one holding him. Sometimes we feel we're the ones holding on to him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he, we feel that I'm the one that accepted you. I'm the one that decided to follow you. I'm the one that is following you. You know, look at all the fasting, all the praying, all the things I've done, me, I'm following you, you know. I want the best. I'm following you because you are the best and I want the best. I understand the deep things, you know. And uh, God has a way of showing us within those times that we are not the ones holding on to him, that he is the one. Sometimes like, I'm going to let go of you now. Lord, I feel like letting go. I feel like letting go. And he's like, let go now. <laughs> and then you let go and then realize that he is actually holding you up and he has been the one holding you up. It's a beautiful um, symphony is a beautiful tango dance, a wrestle, a life of, of absolute romance with the maker of the heavens and the earth, um, where we just keep on toggling on each other, holding on each other. His wisdom is more than capable of keeping you. The Bible says, uh, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Um, and he builds so much joy in us that in that moment, you may not know what he's working out. But at the end, just like he said to the children of Israel, I let you go through uh, the desert, through the wilderness, and through all, this, all these things that's happened to you so that I will show you. Prove your heart. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes you see your heart and you are humbled. Sometimes you see your journey and, and you lift up your hands some more. Hmm. Um, in all of it, God is glorified. Yeah. So good. How did you deal with the spirit of loss? Wasting is not easy. Please pray for us single ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for sharing your story. It's so encouraging. When people are single, there is a lot of failings in that regard. I believe that it is possible to live pure mm -hmm. in such a way that you will not have the memory of sin ruling you. However, in those seasons, there is a huge, huge test. After people get married, people realize there's a lot more tests available more than lost. That mm. lost is not just sexual. Mm. As a young person, I thought that lost as a sexual sin was higher than lost as greed. But when you look at the country today, it is not lost as a sexual sin that is pulling down the whole country. It's lost as greed. Mm. It is the higher thing. So deal with lust as a sexual immorality before it becomes lust as greed. 
Hmm. Take it very important. Take it as a as as something to fight, a, a worthy cause to wrestle and overcome and leave without sexual sin and not allow yourself to be entangled with it because there is much more than lost as a sexual sin. There is much more than lost as a sexual sin. There is lost in many ways. A lot of fornication that go on with young single people like you and I. Well, before I got married. I was about to ask John, is you and I? A young, young, young not, people. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of the fight looks like it is lost as sexual sin staring in your eyes. Mm. But in reality, it is the flesh winning the battle over your destiny. Mm. In this, you see that the sex sounds so sweet, so heavenly before you get married. After you get married, people stop sleeping with their spouses. spouses. Yeah. It was like, it is a normal thing. And this is because when, when it was fornication, it was sweeter. sweeter. So it was sweeter. Yes, yeah, so to speak. And now in marriage is, in fact, a lot of married people now step out of their marriages and it will show you that what was sweet in the sex, in the fornication, was not the sex itself. itself. It was the disobedience against God that was sweet to your flesh. Mm, can, can I add to yeah. what you just said? You know the scripture that says that stolen bread is sweet? Yeah. Stolen waters in the book of Proverbs. Yeah. So it's the idea of stealing something, getting away with something. That is what makes it sweet. It's not so much the thing itself, because bread is bread. You can find bread anywhere. Yeah. But how is it that the one that you stole is the one that's sweet? sweet? Yes. You know, so I just wanted to add yeah. to what you're saying. Yeah. And, and, and the nature of that is what is sweet. The disobedience against God, the human nature, your body wants to disobey God. It is sweet for your body to disobey God. Death is sweet to the dead. It is sweet for your body to disobey God. It is not really the sex. Because when you get married, you realize that when sex becomes obedient, it's now a duty. Like, you now, you now want to yes. make sure you are actually doing, doing it. Yes. <laughs> you know. And then you see people go to marriage counselors and they're, yes, like, and they're like, try to have sex twice a week. <laughs> As a single person, you're like, you're like how can someone be begging you to, to have sex? sex? It is because this, <laughs> it is not just this, the, the disobedience was what empowered the sweetness. Mm. When it becomes obedience, if you have not trained yourself to live obediently towards God, you will struggle with sex inside, inside the marriage. Inside of marriage. So, hence why Paul says, um, when you're fasting, ask for permission from your spouse yeah. and make sure you do not stay away apart from each other yeah, for, too long. for too long. There's a reason why he's saying that. Yeah. It's not just because, oh, my people must have sex. Yeah. This is the way. Yes. Yeah. You should have sex it's true. to stay together. And, and that mind that says, oh, I'm living single life. I'm going to be stuck with one person. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live, lose all this freedom. Freedom. It is the flesh. Fight the flesh. The flesh, the flesh doesn't, it's not just trying to get you to fall into sin. The flesh wants to seize your destiny. Mm. It wants to take away from you the calling of God upon your life. It wants to derail you. It wants to give you a lower vision than what God intends for you. Yeah, that was so good. I came back to listen to the series again to get more insight to this process. Question, do you think the process could have been easier if he just started off being friends, get to know her, instead of wanting to confirm if she's the one before getting close to her? Mm, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. I have some thoughts about that. Go ahead. Okay, here's what I think. Um, because now we have the luxury of retrospection we now know we now know what we both weren't seeing when i was wasting and when he was trying to confirm in the season when i was wasting many things were going on in his life i don't know if you've seen the bits of our video where he spoke about the betrayals he went through being physically attacked knifed in the face um his self-esteem was broken his he his identity was attacked he was basically attacked on all sides, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. There was a lot going on with him. So if you now add a relationship to that, I don't, I honestly, personally, 
I feel like God is the only wise God. He's the all encompassing wise mm-hmm. God. Because if we were together in that season, maybe I would have seen him at his lowest and felt like this cannot be God's will mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. Maybe we would have had clashes because we both were not faring well in that season. He wasn't faring well. I wasn't faring well. So imagine bringing two people who are struggling with one thing or the other together. What, what sort of relationship would we have had? God in his infinite manifold wisdom knew that we probably would not have been able to handle a friendship, a relationship in that season. God also may have probably been saving us from the issue of this loss that keeps coming up. Yeah. If we were together for maybe a year and a half, maybe who knows how we would have struggled in that regard. But when Sam saw, he literally came to find me the same day, told me when it caught me 10 days after I met his entire family and we started plan- planning the wedding. Yeah. Do you see how quickly it all happened? Maybe some people have the grace to be in a relationship for such a lengthy time, but maybe God in his wisdom knew that we probably would not yeah. and helped us ahead of time. I don't yeah. know if you see what I'm saying. So yeah, that's, that's the angle from which I'm seeing it. Yeah. From a man's perspective, I, I think that dating someone for a long time doesn't mean you have found the person, you know? Mm. You can date someone for 10 years and find the person six months to the day you get married to them. Mm. The Bible says, he that finds a good wife. A woman can be in front of you for two years and then you finally find her. Mm. The <laughs> finding is when destiny, conviction, and moment, the, the moment, um, interact. They come together. together. Mm. And sticking around someone does not guarantee that. Hey. What guarantees that is staying in the presence of God Mm. and setting your eyes on the eternal. This means that when you set your eyes on the eternal, what it does to you is to give you single vision and makes you start to see life through the lens of one. Mm. All of that begins to come together and then your destiny the bloodline, your destiny begins to speak. All of this can be accelerated. All of this can be decelerated. Hence, there is no one person for you. However, if you give yourself, God has the wisdom to ensure that your life is channeled. If you need to know the person some more to help you get convicted, God is going to do that for you. My journey with God, I believe God may have looked at me and asked, and has trusted that if I believe today, I'll move today. This is not the first decision in my life that I heard today and moved today. It's not the first time I am receiving conviction and taking a decision. God knows his children. Yeah. And if you need some more convincing, he's merciful enough to give you that. Case in point, Gideon. With yes. The with the fleece, with the dew. He knows how to give you a reason to believe mm. once he sees your heart is ready. That's good. That's so good. This is for Delphine. How were you able to quit your job when God asked you to? Do you find it very easy to quit? Does it look like you were, or did it look like you were out of your mind to people around you, friends and family? Did you save up first before quitting or what? First of all, I didn't have a regular nine to five job. What I had was very flexible. But even as flexible as it was, it was still a bit hard. Um, in that season, I speak a lot about how ambitious I was. I was literally doing YouTube, influencer marketing. YouTube especially, I was doing it like my life depended on it. I was not sleeping. I'll be editing all night, running from place, tower to post, you know, to film interviews. Like I really was trying to push YouTube as a career. And I, I feel like I do believe I succeeded to an extent. So when God was asking me to quit, I had... I knew why he was asking me to quit. He was trying to strip me, you know, of not just, it wasn't just about money and ambition. It was about pride, especially because I prided myself in the fact that I was a one man squad. When I think about (laughs) how I was in that season and a dream that a friend shared that opened my eyes to see the pride that was really inside of my chest. It made me understand why God was asking me to quit. So when, when, when God asked me to quit, it wasn't a thing of just sit at home and do nothing. He was taking me on a journey. I literally would wake up every morning and stay in his presence, sit up in bed, my Bible open, meditate on scripture, pray, speak in tongues, intercede. Like I was doing that clockwork. It wasn't just be doing nothing, loaf about, you know, there was a reason why. 
And when I speak about pride, let me give you an instance. A friend of mine, <laughs> Seal, Seal had this dream that I had, I had gone on, ex- on an expedition to space, right? And I had come back and I was so proud of myself and I was telling her, oh my gosh, this is what I did. And, and I was planning to go on another expedition. And she saw me in my like astronaut outfits with the helmets and everything. And I said I was going to go the second time. And guess what? I went the second time when I crash landed in Saturn. When she had this dream with me, I was just like, what? But through that dream, God opened my eyes to see so many things. It started with my mom. He led me to five different people that interpreted aspects of the dream. When I told my mom, the first thing my mom said was, um, Saturn is a stoic father. Like, when, like, how did that come about? Mm. Literally, what she said to me is, Saturn is a disciplinarian. So I don't know how my mother has knowledge about all the planets and all these things. That's literally the first thing she said to me. Saturn is a disciplinarian. He's a stoic father. So the first thing I got from the dream was that God wanted to discipline me. How is it that I went on the first expedition and it was fine? I, di- I succeeded. The second time I crash landed. The next person he sent me to was Salome. Salome said that I sounded like Satan. When Satan said, I shall ascend, that I am going on another expedition. So she was one that pointed out the pride. They said the third person noted that Saturn is a gaseous planet. There's no land. So how did that crash land on air, right? I think this was Esther. She literally, what she was saying to me is that God wants you to, he's pulling the rug from rest under your feet. There's no ground for you to land on. He wants you to land on air, the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you have seen, through all these people, then it was then, I think the last person was Sunesi, so four people. Sunesi pointed out something that had to do with grace. I, I don't know how he came about this, but I remember that. So now when I put everything together, I saw, Literally, God was showing me what was inside of my heart. He was showing me what he wanted to do to me. Mm. And he was showing me the result of doing that. Mm. I don't know if you guys are tracking with me. So when he said, quit your job, it was not just about the job. It was about what he wanted to do in my heart. What he wanted to prove. What he wanted me to see within me that I needed to let go of. So if God is saying the same thing to you, because the reason why you're asking this question might be because you're in that situation. Mm. Ask the Lord to show you why he wants you to quit your job. It's not just, he's not trying to punish you. Mm. He's trying to prove something. He's trying to test you mm. so that when you come out, you come out like pure gold. I hope that answers your question. Also, another thing I wanted to mention is you said, uh, did I save up? I didn't have any savings, but in that season, I was receiving a salary for a job that I was not doing. Mm. Somebody was paying me a monthly stipend. When I think about it, I'm just like, this could only have been God, <laughs> you know, and which takes me to the book of Joshua. God gave the children of Israel manna. And guess what? When they got to the promised land and it was time to till the ground, the manna ceased. So this is also to let you know that there's, there's a grace period for that. And when it's time to get back to work, don't be like me. Don't learn from my own mistake and don't stay too long in the jobless <laughs> season and actually get to work. It took me a while. I mean, even this YouTube that I'm doing now, it took a while before it got at me saying it, before I finally came back to it. So please, learn from my mistake. If if God says quit, quit. And when he says come back, come back. Don't waste too much time. So, um, Mazi Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any last words for the people? Maybe a prayer, a word of wisdom, anything? Uh, well, I, I think that Del and I are a good mix. And it really makes me, um, I, I would always see couples, see, I always, when I was, before I got married, I always see like a very loud person marry a very quiet person. Like, so, so who's the loud person and who's the quiet person? Well, let them decide. <laughs> you wow. know, I always see someone that is very outgoing, marry someone that's very. Yeah, so it's like a, a yeah. mix of. And like, I always wonder like, how do why? you guys <laughs> end up like this? Like, why don't you just marry someone who you're chilling with, you know, your friends? You know, I always see those things. You know, I wonder how it happened until it happened to me. Um, even when it comes to spiritual things, Dell loves, um, has a natural delight for the simple, you know, and not that she does not understand the depths of God. We... Um, but she, he, her take on it is very different from my take. And, you know, slowly I'm getting to understand and see, and she also getting to understand mine as well. 
And it fascinates me, you know, the wisdom of God would ever fascinate all of us. Yeah. Let alone in marriage. He is going to fascinate you. And learning to trust him is a huge, huge sign that you're ready for this. Yeah. So God, may God strengthen you and give you the grace to hopefully we can do something that would help us get together more. Mm. Um, but there's a lot to learn from you, a lot to learn from, from us, a lot to learn from everyone around you. Surround yourself with the right counsel um, and God give you strength to continue to wait on him. It doesn't get any easier in marriage. It's now God begins to prune another aspect of your life. So pray for us as we pray, pray for, for us. Too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think my last words would be, we're doing this video is not to try to project ourselves as the standard or as this perfect couple. We have, we still have so many things between the two of us that we are learning and we're proving every day. And God is literally chopping things off, replacing them. You know, we're, chasing against each other, having frictions and smoothing out as we go along. So we're not, we're not without fault, you know, none of these. Speak for yourself. None of these videos are to project this perfect couple thing. No, Uh, you know, we just want to show you basically based on what God is teaching us that it is possible to do things God's way. And just because it's, it is done God's way does not mean it to be easy or simple. You know, that's another video that we're going to do at some point. Just because God chose your spouse does not mean your marriage will work. <laughs> there are so many, so many aspects to marriage, you know, and you have to just learn as you go. So, yeah, um, I'll just say a quick prayer. Father, we thank you for everyone under the sound of our voices who has listened, who had questions, um, who still has questions even after these videos. Lord, we ask that you meet them where they are. Sweet Holy Spirit, we ask that you you begin to minister to every single person who has come across this video, that the questions deep down in their hearts that they do not even know that they have, that you begin to answer them, Amen. that you use these videos to draw them even closer to you. Amen. It's not just about marriage. It's not just about romance or having a companion, but it's about, it's about the kingdom of God. It's about the agenda of heaven here on earth. It's about purpose. Mm. Father, open their eyes to see this. Open their eyes, Lord God, to chase after you first before any thoughts about marriage in the name of Jesus. Amen. If this is the way that you have chosen to bring them in, Father, we ask that you do your thing. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.